I think it's interesting how an area can change, dramatically change, in such a short amount of time. San Diego's Embarcadero is one of those areas. Starting in the early 30s and up into the late 70s, San Diego was known as the tuna capital of the world. Several large companies were processing tuna right down at the Embarcadero, and over 40,000 people were being employed directly or indirectly by the tuna industry. In fact, it was ranked San Diego's third largest industry behind the Navy and aerospace. In those days, tuna was being served in over 85% of all American households, making it the fish of choice, and it was being caught with a pole. Fishing from the rack worked pretty well, but slowly a new technique to catch the great tuna would be implemented. Instead of a pole, there was the use of a net. This technique, which would revolutionize the industry, was called pursing. The mechanics of pursaining was pretty simple. Basically the net is a big rectangle. When you make your set, it's a cylinder on top, it's a cylinder in the bun. The net is a mile long and the net is discharged by the tuna boat going one direction and a skiff going the other and making a circle. And, and we could let that skiff go by hitting it. We had a pelican hook which had a cable connected to that and we got in position and I said, let it go. We hit that pelican hook, the skiff would slide off the end of the, of the vessel pulling the net with it. So by the net, as the net was going out, now you circle the school the way you want it to go around it. For some unknown reason, dolphin run with tuna in the eastern Pacific. So if you want to catch tuna, you have to find the dolphin. You get close to a school of dolphin, and the first thing you want to see, you know, what the waves are doing. I mean, is it calm weather? Is it, you know? And you try to get the, the boat in a position so you can catch the dolphin. Now, they're tricky, they're very smart, they got a sonar, and you have three speedboats now with speedboat drivers, and you send them out. And then when the speedboats are, you got the school the way he wants it, you know, with the, the it's like cowboys, herding cattle, you know, put it in the pen, just like that. You don't leave a space between the speedboats because those sonar will pick up that, that distance between the boats and they'll, they'll scoot out. So the lead guy with the speedboat is really the head guy. He's the guy where everybody else follows, but then you're talking to him on, on the radio. Yeah, I used to be the speedboat driver. Me and my brother and a couple other guys used to be, used to run out the porpoise in those days. You know, the little radios and stuff like that, walkie-talkies. Walkie Something else, rough, tough. <laughs>